Hey everybody, my name is Austin Lewis. I'm the agent with the short term shop that is over Perdido Key, Pensacola Beach, and Navarre. Just wanted to come on here and kind of go over the map, answer a few frequent questions that I get, and uh, hopefully help you guys out for whenever you're looking in my area for a short term rental. So, uh, to start off, I've got all of the public beach accesses in gold here all the little stars all that is public beach access um, that's really what separates Pensacola Beach from a lot of surrounding areas um, you know you don't have a very big island to be buying on anyways you definitely want to be staying on this most southern peninsula overall the Gulf of Mexico down here is going to be your bread and butter the closest you can get to that the better your cash flow is going to be but if you end up having to buy on, you know, the second or third row and your guests have to drive three minutes to some public beach access, then it's really not the end of the world. Um, you know, your, your guests are coming here to go to the beach and they're going to be able to get to the beach. Um, a lot of other places have needed beach access or you have to be right on the beach in order to, to make any money. Um, and again, the closest you can get to the beach, the better it'll be, but it's not the end of the world if you're not. Um, so to start off from the west side over here, Perdido Key, I can help you guys all the way up to that Alabama line right there. Uh, the four Bama uh, bar is right there. And so from there all the way to the east, uh, as far east as Navarre, there's a lot of condos right through here. Um, all these properties, guys, when it comes to cash flow, um, all these properties are going to cash flow. If it's got four walls and a roof, it's going to make money. It's all going to depend on how you manage it, things like that. Um, that's going to be be the big differences. So as far as that goes, there's not, not much of a sweet spot um, unless you're looking for a certain type of uh, property as far as single family home, town go, town home, uh, things like that. But so right here, we've got a lot of, a lot of condos um public beach access restaurants it's it's just one one strip through here 292 you can see comes through here and then you kind of got the head of perdido key you got big lagoon state park here i wouldn't go past past this big head here this is a, a huge golf course actually right here it's called the lost key um golf course and they've got townhomes villas condos in there they do have a seven day rental restriction um, so if you buy in, in that golf course, just kind of keep that in mind. And that's something we'll go over whenever we're, we're talking one-on-one, -on -one. but, um, so, so that's there all out here. There are a few single family homes, but Perdido Key has got a lot of condos and, and ex with the exception of the town homes that are in that, that golf course. Uh, and then right here, this public beach access, this is, um, Johnson's beach. Johnson's beach is a huge, uh, just seashore. There's not a, a, a building on this, this whole strip of land right here, all the way down to Fort McRae. Fort McRae is an old boar fort. Uh, it's pretty cool. Your, your guests can go walk around and visit. It's kind of been tore up pretty bad by some hurricanes. So not a lot there left, but a uh, beautiful area. You can walk all the way down here if you wanted. Um, on the other side, this is the pass is what lets boats come out of the bay into the Gulf of Mexico. But if you wanted to get to Pensacola Beach from Perdido Key, you have to drive all the way around um, and, and come through Gulf Breeze right here to get into Pensacola Beach. So Perdido Key is almost really it's it's its own thing. Um, still great cash flow. You're over there close to uh, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach. If your guests really want to get into some commercialized stuff and get away from the beach, do some arcading or you know something like that then they could go over there but um it's it you, you'll be hard pressed to find uh nicer beaches um anyway you come over here to pensacola beach pensacola beach has it, it's kind of the flip of a coin whether it's going to be short-term rentable or not that is definitely something that we'll check before we put any offers in. So, you know, we're not going to get you under contract on anything that's not short-term rentable, but they do have some restrictions over here and it is almost literally by a house by house basis. So don't scratch this area off of your list completely. Um, but just kind of keep that in mind that you don't fall in love with the property yet before we check um, this Villa Sabine it is almost always not short-term rentable, so you can scratch that off. Peg Leg Pete's, uh, great restaurant. 
by the way, but from here west on these uh, few proper this there's some condos and things through here. Most of those are short term rentable. So uh, if you do you know find one through there, then odds are we're good. But uh, same way, tons of public beach access right here, and then right here on the last one here, that's where Fort Pickens starts. Fort Pickens, it's about I want to say it's about six miles seven miles of just road where you drive down you see the beaches there's lots of old fort uh, war bunkers through here and this is a huge tourist destination um you can walk around the old fort i want to say it was built in like the 1830s and it's pretty amazing how much is still there after all the hurricanes and stuff there's a fishing pier there um there's lots of things to do just in that little area but all of that is nothing but public beach if you know if your guests wanted to got frisky and wanted to, to go on a hike or a bike ride then that'd be a place to do it um surfing things like that fishing whatever they wanted to do um you get down here there's there's some scattered restaurants and and bars and things um and tourist shops uh fishing piers little different things for them to do through there but then same way whenever you get to the end of Pensacola Beach on the east side here, you got the Gulf Islands National Seashore. And again, it's nothing but beach. Plenty of, you know, beach access. If your guests are, are trying to find a place to go, um, there's there's no buildings except for little lifeguard shacks and restrooms from, from there all the way to uh, where Navarre starts. Navarre is a great area. Um, they have a lot more single family homes. If that's kind of your bread and butter, I'm a little hesitant to say prices because things are changing so much from day to day, but um, town homes, you're probably going to be looking at around 500,000 to get into condos. You're probably, you could get in some of those for as low as 250 sometimes 300 is a pretty good bet. Um, and then the single family homes are going to start around 800,000 or so. Um, that's, that's on the low end. And if you're out here on the Gulf of Mexico on the, the bread and butter, then it's going to be a million dollars is a safe bet, uh, especially for a single family home. So just keep that in mind whenever you're looking, uh, you know, depending on you're, you're trying to pick your, your, uh, what kind of unit you want to get into. Um, so all this is there. great. There's, there's some restaurants through here, a lot of restaurants up here, but you, you don't want to buy a short-term rental up here. If you're calculating, uh, numbers off of the air DNA, all those numbers are going to be based off of out here. Um, the, the, the properties in here will still cash flow. I mean, they're going to get rented, but the closer you can get to the Gulf of Mexico, those are the properties that are going to get booked out first. So that's that's going to be uh pretty much the gist of it um we can take a look at some of the i've got some of the air dna data here um if you guys are going to be self-managing it's up to you how uh conservative you want to be i run my numbers with a 75th percentile it, if you're going to be self-managing you guys are working with a short-term shop you guys have already got it going on you just have to have faith in yourself you're you're going to be in that 75th percentile i i mean it's it's rare that you're not it happens but i i definitely think you're safe to use those numbers for calculations so uh you, you can see the three bedroom or, or i hope you can see it i know it's kind of zoomed out a little bit but um for a three bedroom you're looking at 89,764 this is 2021 data for navarre um whenever you hit that fourth bedroom mark you see a huge jump um pretty significant um so if you can find a property with four bedrooms out there then uh that's great any of them are going to cash flow one bedroom forty eight thousand. um i usually use a good rule of thumb of about probably 40 percent is what you will end up uh grossing by the you know at the end of the year of course management style is everything it's gonna all, all these numbers are gonna vary but, um, you know, just kind of a little rule of thumb. Then this is the Pensacola data. Um, this is what I would use for Perdido Key as well. There's not really an air DNA data for Perdido Key since it's just kind of its own little uh, 
uh, island almost over there. Um, but Pensacola data is going to be very similar to the Perdido key data um, based off of numbers that I've personally ran. But, but kind of the same way. So, so you've got a three bedrooms, you got 72,346. When you jump up to a fourth bedroom, you go all the way up to 97,302. Um, so pretty good little jump from three to four bedrooms. But it, any of these properties, guys, are, you know, if it's, like I said, one bedroom, uh, all the way, we don't see a whole lot of bedrooms over five. Um, it's possible if you are getting a new construction, you could have it built. Uh, but five bedrooms is kind of the max that we see. But any of these properties you got four walls and a roof, then they're going to get sold and they're going to make money. Um, so if you guys end up having any questions for me, then definitely feel free to reach out. But uh, I'm, I'm happy to help and look forward to working with you guys. Thank you.